In this video, we're going to be talking about the heat pump tax credits that are available in 2024 and beyond. We're going to be talking about the Inflation Reduction Act and what the implications are for heat pumps, how you can qualify for these heat pumps, what the actual heat pumps are. We've reviewed the Inflation Reduction Act and the dust is kind of settled on what the rebates that are actually available are. So we're going to give you a detailed breakdown of these rebates. And at the end of this video, there'll be a link to a few other videos that you can check out about some of the specific heat pumps that we are referencing in this video that qualify for these heat pumps. There'll be other videos linked at the end of this video so you can find out what models actually qualify because when we talk about things like cold climate heat pumps and some of the heat pump tax credits available, we'll give you an example of what some of those heat pumps are, but more on that later. Now, first off, let's talk about the Inflation Reduction Act and what it actually means and what heat pump tax credits are available in 2024. Now, technically, these heat pump tax credits based on the bill that was signed are available through 2033. And there's a few notable points that you want to take home. Now, number one is that heat pumps, they cap out in terms of the tax credit that's available in the amount of $2,000 annually. Now, one thing that I want to clarify that I've done a little bit more digging and I'll even link the IRS website so you can read it for yourself and see if it reads the same way to you. Make sure you're running this by your CPA or your tax professional first. Remember, I'm just some dude on YouTube and I'm definitely not a tax professional, although as a business owner, I'm always looking to save a buck or two on taxes. And so I do pay attention to the tax code. But when you read the tax credit, they say that you can claim 30% of the installation up to to, and then they have an annual cap. Now, it's going to vary between the different types of equipment. And for your traditional air source heat pumps, it's a $2,000 annual cap. Now, a common question that we would get asked or you might be asking yourself, I asked myself this question is, okay, is it 30% of the cost just total? And you can, if you can't, if it's capped out this year at $2,000, can you then take another $2,000 cap next year? The way that it reads on the website, the answer is no. It's actually $2,000 per year as an annual cap and you cannot carry the credit forward. So for example, if you spent $20,000 on a heat pump that was installed this year, let's say, and that's, you can write off the installation cost as well, or you towards that credit. So it's not just, hey, if you go out and buy a heat pump, what is the cost of the actual heat pump? Installation costs are included in that. So that $20,000 number that I gave you, let's say you buy bought a fancy high-end heat pump for your home or several heat pumps, then that of that $6,000 of it, which is 30% of 20,000 would qualify qualify towards the tax rebate. However, you can only write off 2000 of that because remember that rebate is capped at $2,000. Now, this is only true for air source heat pumps because if you look at geothermal heat pumps, the geothermal heat pump credit is actually 30% annually with no annual cap. So that means if you spent $50,000 or $100,000 on a geothermal system, which yes, they can be that expensive, especially for larger homes or even more expensive. The reason geothermal is so much more expensive expensive is because you actually have to drill loops or hydronic loops into the ground in order for them to run. And the cost of drilling a loop 300 feet deep is very expensive. It's not cheap by any means. And so that's where those high numbers come in. But that's why the government is giving you a 30% tax credit with no cap. So that means if you spent $100,000 installing a few geothermal systems for you know a big house, the government would allow you to take a $30,000 tax credit based on that geothermal heat pump tax credit. Now that's different than an air source heat pump. If you just live in home where you have a traditional central air or forced air system, you probably are looking at a basic air source heat pump and not installing a geothermal setup. In order to set up or install geothermal a heat pump, typically you need more land or space to be able to drill for the amount of loops that are necessary in order to tie into that. And this is not a geothermal video by any means. We have another video about uh, geothermal heat pumps that will be coming out shortly. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, consider subscribing if you're interested in checking that out. But the bottom line is that let's talk, I want to get back to talking about the heat pump tax credits that are available and what that means for a traditional forced air system. Now, the question you might be asking yourself is, well, okay, it's only a $2,000 cap. So that means if I spend basically six or $7,000 on a heat pump installation, I can qualify for that $2,000 tax credit. Because remember, you can only offset 30% of whatever you spend on the equipment and the 
installation, is it worth it? And I'll talk about whether or not it's worth it because one of the most common scenarios where we recommend getting a heat pump, and we primarily serve the markets of Colorado in Phoenix, Arizona. Q4 of this year, we'll be coming to Texas and we'll be expanding to several markets in Texas. But the bottom line is that heat pumps make the most sense in our opinion in Colorado for people that have solar. And the reason is because you can literally get completely either off the grid or at least separate yourself from the volatility of energy prices once you're able to be self-sufficient and generate your own electricity via solar panels. You can literally eliminate your bill or pretty substantially reduce your bill. So you're heating and cooling using solar power year round. And a lot of what we install out here are dual fuel systems. So people will still have a furnace backup for those really cold nights. You can go all electric if you want and have an electric backup heat kit for those cold nights. But the bottom line is all the cold climate heat pumps that qualify for this tax credit work great in Colorado because our average lows, even in the coldest months, and this is not including in the mountains because in the mountains, it does get a little bit colder. So once you go outside of Denver Metro and you go to the higher elevations, it does get a little bit colder. But even in those uh, climates, it's still relatively moderate in terms of how cold it gets because the average lows in the coldest month in Denver Metro is around 20 degrees Fahrenheit. And all of the heat pumps that qualify for the tax credit we're referencing in this video have to be what's called a cold climate heat pump. Now let's talk about what a cold climate heat pump is. In order for something to qualify as a cold climate heat pump, it has to accomplish a few things. Now, number one is it has to maintain a COP of 1.75 at five degrees. COP stands for coefficient of performance. And what that means is the amount of heat energy that it puts out at that temperature of five at five degrees Fahrenheit, the amount of power it uses, it needs to be at a ratio of 1.75 by comparison with the electric input compared to the heat output. That's what COP means. I explained that in another video about energy efficiency ratings and what coefficient of performance means. The easiest way to simplify it is the amount of heat energy that goes into a space heater, for example, which is electric resistive heat. Those all have a COP of one. And the reason they have a COP of one is because you have one watt of of energy for one watt of heat. And that's how electric resistive heat works. Whereas in a heat pump, because it heats by a different model, it heats via thermodynamics, which is the use of refrigerant inside of a refrigeration circuit of performance at varying outdoor temperatures. Now, the minimum to qualify in addition to being that COP of 1.75 at five degrees, the other thing that you have to, or the heat pump has to have in order to qualify is it has to maintain at least 75% capacity at five degrees Fahrenheit in order to qualify as a cold climate heat pump. Now, most of the systems that we install uh, do qualify for this cold climate heat pump. The exception is going to be five ton Daikin fits because of the ratings on the five tons that the Daikin fit enhanced does not qualify, but all of the other Daikin fit enhanced products, which again, that's gonna be one of the videos I link at the end of this, that and one of the products that qualifies for that heat pump tax credit, those qualify as cold climate heat pumps. So they keep up in cold, low ambient temperatures and maintain their efficiency and they do very well. And as a result, you get a tax credit for it. Now, whether or not this makes economic sense for you is really going to come down to something I mentioned earlier. And that's the source of, of power. Because really, if you look at comparing how much it costs you to run a furnace to how much it costs you to run a heat pump, what you're actually comparing is the cost of natural gas, which historically has been very low. And that's the truth about natural gas. The exception would be in recent years. And this is why we got a lot of inquiries in 2021 and 2022 for heat pumps, because natural gas gas prices skyrocketed those years and people that were used to having a energy bill that was maybe around $150 in the winter, suddenly we're getting bills for $300 or $400 and people, you know, that got their attention because their bill was a lot more expensive and these are not for mansions. This is just to, you know, heat and, well, I was going to say heat and cool, but it's not for heating and cooling. It's just to heat in the winter, a 2,000 or 3,000 square foot home and they were still getting these pretty big bills and for a relatively moderate climate and so as a result, people had a lot of interest in putting in heat pumps. Now, if the cost to run the heat pump is cheaper than the cost to run the furnace then, or, or the cost of the natural gas, then in this instance, you would save money. The other way that you can almost guarantee you save money is by putting in solar panels so that you can offset your electricity usage in the winter and in the summer. Because remember, a heat pump is just an air conditioner with a reversing valve. So a heat pump is also your air conditioner. So if you put in a high efficiency heat pump, those high efficiency heat pumps are also going to be high efficiency air conditioners. So you're not just going to save but on your heating bill in the winter, you're also going to save on your cooling bill in the summer. And our experience when we go from a traditional single stage, like 13 sear, 15 sear, 
AC and then we compare it with how much it costs to run a Daikin Fit system. In the summer, on average, we see about a 30 or 40% savings. It is very drastic. That's not an exaggeration. And the reason is because a Daikin Fit system modulates and it's an inverter driven technology. So it ramps up and down on a continuum. And as a result, this is how you maximize those savings. But where I was going with this, where as the number one way that you can really maximize your savings is pairing this with a solar setup as well. And the reason and that this makes the most sense, especially now with the new tax credits is right now included in the Inflation Reduction Act, you also have a tax credit available for solar panels. Now, I'm not as familiar with the solar panel tax credit because we haven't dug into it as much, but at a glance, when I looked at it, this seems to read the same way that the geothermal tax credit does, meaning that you get a 30% write-off or a tax credit based on the amount of the solar panel. So if you spend $20,000 or $30,000, we'll use 30,000 because it's a round number, but if you use $30,000 on a, for a, you know, in terms of what you invested for a solar setup, you would get 30% of that, which is around nine or $10,000 in terms of a tax credit off of the purchase cost. And, and that doesn't come when you buy the equipment. This is a tax credit when you file your taxes. So basically if you owed $10,000 in a tax credit for the year, then you would be able to offset whatever your tax credit was. You can't get a refund or rebate more than what you owe. That is something that is outlined very clear in how the bill reads. So basically if you don't have a tax liability for the year, there's no tax benefit to putting in any of this equipment because you're not going to be able to claim a rebate that you can carry forward on future years. You can only use it in this year. And I honestly, I think that's kind of smart for fiscal reasons, but I'm not going to talk about that in this video. But the bottom line is that this is really a good tax credit to take advantage of. I don't think that it's contradictory or counterproductive because the equipment that does qualify is actually better equipment for your house. So if you've been on the fence about putting in a high efficiency heat pump and wondering whether or not it makes sense for your specific scenario, the best thing to do is I'll make sure to link a few videos at the end of this and you can watch those videos and kind of decide for yourself because in addition to the tax savings, although tax credits are always nice, you want to make sure that it's something that makes sense for your situation and the type of home you have and that it's going to keep up in your climate and there's going to be an actual benefit to you above and beyond just getting some sort of tax credit. And if you happen to be in one of the areas we service like Denver, Colorado or Phoenix, Arizona, you can actually schedule an appointment with us for free. We come out for free for all first time customers, whether that's for a service call or annual maintenance, or if you're just looking for an estimate for system replacement. And there's actually a link in the description below where you can actually schedule online at your convenience, as well as an up to date list of the cities and states that we service. So you can stay up to date when we start servicing your Metro. And as mentioned earlier, there's a few videos popping up on the screen that talk about some of the heat pump models that we like that also qualify for this heat pump tax credit. So make sure you check those out if you haven't done so already, and we will catch you on the next episode.